Adopt Technologies, The Elephant in the Room podcast brings you gigantic tech stories that inspire. These are creators, innovators, and change makers. Every episode, our guests embody one of the core values that makes Adopt so different from every other tech company. Much like an elephant, guests on this show are emotionally intelligent and ready to make a gigantic impact on the world. This is the Elephant in the Room podcast. I'm Carrie Pena. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. I am in studio today with Brett Helgeson, who is the CEO and managing partner of Adopt Technologies here in Phoenix. Brett, thanks for being in studio. Hey, Carrie. Thanks so much. Happy Episode to be here. Episode number one of your podcast. Let's dive right in. I want to I want to share with the audience why it was important for you to launch this podcast and what stories are you hoping to share? Well, I think in general, we just really wanted to be able to get out to the world and the community and and spread the word on a lot of wonderful professions and and individuals in the technical world. Uh, we wanted to basically get people involved that can share their stories and and share a little bit about their technology industry experience as well as as other interesting stories, um, and hopefully you know inform people as well as bring some insight and and even maybe inspire some individuals to try out technology as a profession or try new things in their life. The mission is uh, big tech ideas and people in the world of tech who are doing important and innovative things with a special focus on diversity and inclusion. Let's let's talk about that for a second because I know that's really important to you in particular as your company continues to grow. Absolutely. Well, one thing that I've always believed is that it, I, I want to be one of the least intelligent individuals in the room. And in my experience, surrounding yourself with a lot of talented individuals, which from my perspective comes in all sizes, shapes, colors, and forms, it's really important to make sure that you have a diverse set of insights, feedback, different ways of looking at things. And there's no better way to do that than to have a diverse set of backgrounds, races, genders surrounding you. And so whether it be in the boardroom, whether it be on your team, it's always interesting to me how there are different perspectives that really help spawn creativity when you're looking at it, whether it's a business challenge or a, or some sort of a strategy or a decision personally or professionally, just to have that insight and sounding board that's going to bring out something different than what you may be thinking is to me what diversity and inclusion is all about. Obviously, there's an acceptance component as well, just simply being non-judgmental, right? Everybody's going to have a different opinion on things, different belief sets. Um, and in many cases, to me, that's where I learn the most. Your company is getting a a lot of publicity. Uh, You're a very humble person, but I'll brag on you for a second myself. So uh, best management consulting firm, uh, Forbes magazine, most admired companies, AZ Big Media, Inc. 5000, fastest growing companies. It goes on and on. You're getting an award for being, you know, one of the top level CEOs, most admired. How are you making this magic happen and, and tell people a little bit more about what you're doing over there at Adopt? I guess the bigger question is how is our incredible team making the magic happen? I mean, obviously it all starts with team. Anybody um, that's a quality leader will tell you that. Uh, We are really blessed to have a lot of people that have bought into the vision. Um, They understand who we are, what we do, how we take care of our clients. And as a result of that, you know, good things will come. I'm a massive believer that if you focus on a couple of primary things, our vision is being a destination employer and a destination IT partner. And in order to accomplish that, you just have to do so many things right on so many levels that if you focus on on accomplishing that, great things are going to come. We really focus on just helping the small and medium-sized business uh, not have to worry about IT. So we become their outsourced IT partner. We handle everything from high-level CIO consultation all the way down through the tactical, support their end users, take care of computers and things of that nature. But the core of our business is really focused on cloud hosting. And honestly, we were a pioneer in that. I mean, from an MSP perspective, we had our own cloud platform in 2009. Um, And a lot of our clients that have been with us for a long time can definitely say they were earlier adopters of hosted solutions. Um, But genuinely, we want to become 
an outsourced IT department that feels like we're internal. That's really the goal. We want to make sure we're working with our clients and their teams and they don't feel like we're an external party at all. How did you get started? How did you begin to build this? So my, I am a uh, construction professional by trade. Uh, that's, that's what I grew up doing for a portion of my uh, young career while I was in college. And that's what my degree is in. Had a construction business and I was actually a client of Adopt Technologies prior to purchasing it in 2012. Can you tell a few stories from the pandemic? Because I understand in some of our uh, pre-production meetings, I was told that you were able to help some small businesses who are very fearful of what would happen to them through the pandemic, being able to afford your services to keep the, themselves up and running, that others kind of stepped in to help. It, we've been so blessed with the business ecosystem that we've created with our clients. We actually had many clients that were doing very well, um, both in a cash from a cash position as well as from business operations, and they had some spare cash. We're willing to pay for multiple months of service up front um, to give us some cash flow flexibility to then come alongside some of those clients that were really struggling and had been significantly impacted by um, regulatory shutdowns. So I just can't imagine being in a position as a business owner where you have all the capability to perform business, deliver service to your clients, and an outside entity says you can no longer do that. Um, those are the situations when you see these folks that have put their blood, sweat, and tears, life earnings and savings into building a business and employing people, and now they're hanging by a thread. And in those situations, that's when we can come in and demonstrate the value of a partnership with Adopt Technologies beyond IT services. One of the objectives of this podcast is to have guests on, as I mentioned earlier, who can inspire us within the tech world. And I know that it's important for you to have guests who sort of share your core values. Talk about the core values of Adopt Technologies. Absolutely. Yeah. And we break it down to an acronym. Is it caring? And we start with innovation. Uh, innovation is obviously a core value that's really critical in our business. And Ryan, our CTO, as well as our other senior leaders and engineers do a great job of continuing innovation. Um, security minded, same thing with the cyber threat landscape. We have to be that for our clients. Um, integrity, obviously any business, you have to have good integrity in order to be successful. Teamwork, can't, can't accomplish much without a team and then caring, you know, and that obviously spans an awful lot of things and in, in a lot of different situations. So we really stress that our team cares about not only our clients, but one another and just what we do in the community and the world. How many people work with you? So currently we have 25 um, and we continue to grow. And you're looking at hiring more people. I mean, you've really been able to thrive through the pandemic. And I know you're planning on hitting the ground running even faster come 2022. Absolutely. Well, just like with our client retention, we've been really blessed to have phenomenal employee retention as well. And a lot of that is really tied to allowing people to put their thumbprint on our organization by having say in what we do and recommending changes and how we could do things better and, and, and actually helping us evolve as an organization by bringing their skill sets and knowledge. Um, but overall, boy, right now it's it's a challenging time with talent. And um, we really hope if anybody out there knows good quality technicians or other folks that just want to work for a great company, please come talk to me. Go to our website. So what are, what are the biggest uh, tech issues that you think business owners may face in 2022? Well, there, there's absolutely no doubt. I mean, the, the security threat lab landscape, cyber threats. Um, obviously, it's been a hockey stick for many years. The pandemic brought out some changes in that where it escalated even further with all kinds of fraud. Um, so people clearly see with all of the high level, well-known breaches, whether at the government level or private entity level, that it's not an if, it's a when situation. And so the ability to not only proactively protect against that, but then in the event that something bad does happen, being able to actually recover from it, those are all really critical things. That's going to be one of the number one things for many years to come, in my opinion. Obviously, that's even compounded when you look at the remote work policies that are in place. Um, it's a whole different set of challenges and circumstances when you look at trying to protect all of those endpoints from all over the place, from, from people's homes. Um, so 
I think that's the number one thing for sure that especially businesses need to focus on at this point in time. What do you tell those small businesses who might be worried that they can't afford to engage a company like yours? I would say they can't afford not to. You know, I mean, in reality, a lot of those things are like an insurance policy, especially, you know, disaster recovery plans. You, if, if you don't have those protections in place and something bad happens, um, you legitimately can be out of business. And, and that's just a reality of it. So I think you have to make those investments um, anymore. There's so much technology out there that people do understand and most are starting to see that technology really is an investment in their strategy rather than, you know, just a, a pit of money that they feel like they keep putting money into. But when you look at outsourced partnerships or hosted solutions and things of that nature, the return on the dollar spent is so significant compared to actually going out and hiring an internal IT individual and building infrastructure in-house. It really makes a lot of sense to go horizontal and, and engage some partners you trust for those efforts. We are taping right now in Phoenix. Obviously, your company is based here, but you work nationally and perhaps internationally with clients. But with regard to Phoenix, since it's getting so much uh, attention because we're booming here, and that includes the tech landscape, just talk briefly about what you're most excited to see going on here in the world of tech in Phoenix. Yeah, well, in Phoenix, I mean, it's just absolutely amazing what the Arizona Commerce Authority has done and the state leadership has done to attract businesses and talent. Um, obviously, you see so many companies that are moving headquarters here that are starting up here, both international and in, in the U.S. itself. And so I think for me, just for, for Arizona and Phoenix in particular, to be recognized as a place where they can find great talent, there's a great quality of life, it's a great business environment, um, is super exciting. And so when you continue to see these wonderful logos that appear here in Phoenix. It's something that we fully support because we just know that it's going to bring wonderful opportunity for all of us. But And it continues to enhance the culture, the environment, the, you know, the arts, restaurants, everything. When you bring that kind of industry into an air, a metropolitan area like Phoenix, it is amazing how much domino effect benefit there is and really how much diversity and cultural and otherwise that it really brings into the Valley, which benefits everyone. Well, speaking of logos, that was perfect segue because I was just going to ask you about uh, your brand. So people who visit your website, adopttechnologies.com, will see a beautiful homepage with an elephant. And it says right there on the homepage, uh, grow Growing up is an adventure. What's with the elephants? <laughs> you guys are obsessed with elephants. I am too. But talk to the audience about, you know, sort of why this is part of your DNA. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, I love the elephant too. <laughs> and the great thing is our team loves the elephant more than I ever thought they would. We have people that buy elephant sculptures and they hand them out. It's really cool. Um, no, so when when we were trying to figure out what iconography we wanted to utilize for Adopt and its logo, um, we landed on what we felt was ultimately very representative of who we are. And we didn't go select an elephant and then try to pack Adopt Technologies into it. We felt that it really represented who we already were and that, you know, long memory, herd mentality, really smart. Um, protecting one another, staying together. Um, those are all things that we really feel like we demonstrate day in and day out. Um, and it's really interesting. One of the things, I, I'm a huge believer in uh, everything happens for a reason and that there are signs that validate that those were the right decisions. And literally the day that I came home after so, uh, Tony, Ryan, and myself, uh, Craig was involved too. We all made the decision on the elephant. Um, my son, my youngest son, who at the time I think was in fourth grade, brought home a paper mache sculpture of an elephant that he had done in class. Wow. And it blew my mind. Yeah. Um, outside of that, you know, Ryan is my partner, is actually from South Africa originally. And so he obviously was very tied to elephants and, and loved them. And he was the one that brought up the idea originally when we were doing a lot of searching and it was pretty easy to get on board. When people see that with your branding, I, I imagine that's a great conversation starter. Yeah. 
Absolutely. You know, that one of the interesting things is we we actually gave those out at one of the events that we sponsored a number of years ago. And one of our recently acquired clients, when we were going in to kind of finalize some of the contract and proposal and service discussions, she had the same elephant sitting on her <laughs> desk <laughs> behind her. That's so it was nice wonderful. to personalize things, you know, and just to make 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 it heart centric. I know that that's a, a big objective of yours. Uh, can you talk a little bit about why the company is named Adopt Technologies? Because this has a special meaning. Yeah. Well, and and there's another great example of how when things happen and you get that validation. But um, when we were going through the branding process, uh, we had thought we were renaming the company after we purchased it. And we had really tried to think through so many names and it was just an agonizing process. It was like we were trying to fit a, a round peg into a square hole. And my wife literally looked at me one night and said, what about Adopt Technologies? And I said, that's so perfect. There's no way it's available. And obviously the reason that's meaning to us is because um, we adopted all three of our children. And then obviously you have the connotation of, of our clients adopting new technology and things of that nature. It was just too perfect. And it was the first name where domains, trademarks, everything just lined up and cleared the way. And that evening, Adopt Technologies was born. How do you feel about where you're at right now um, as a leader of your company and what you hope to be able to give to the world? Because what we're talking about on this podcast is not just uh, brilliant people coming up with innovative ideas, but how those ideas are used not only to make money, but also for good. And I know that that's important to you. Yeah, one of the things that I feel like um, we as leaders can do initially, you know, it's wonderful to get engaged and have missions that are bigger than ourselves and certainly give back and support things. But where I see the day-to-day -day impact that I have is really tied to our employees. I mean, I want to see everybody uh, that's involved in our organization uh, be successful, both personally and professionally. So we really stress that you know, there is no challenge, personal or otherwise, that we can't overcome together. Um, and we feel like we know our team well enough that if there's any type of a, a challenge in their lives that's bringing anxiety or stress, you know, we can see it. And when those situations arise, um, we're not hesitant to check in and see how things are going. And fortunately, we've built a relationship such that people are willing to share. And in those instances, we have an opportunity to make a difference. Um, and so things like that, whether it be providing education, whether it be going out and just making an introduction, I'm a huge believer in uh, the, the book, The Go-Giver. And it's one of my favorite books. And I really strongly believe that, you know, whatever you do and provide to others, at some point it'll come back, back around. So um, that's one of the biggest things in the long run. I just want to, I just want to make a difference and help people, you know, whether that be monetarily or just a nice gesture, you know, we need more love and kindness in the world. Well, that's part of the reason that we're doing this podcast, right? And you wanted to produce this podcast to help share these stories. Um, and we're looking for gigantic tech stories that inspire. It may be someone who's doing something that has not been, um, you know, highly publicized and it may be other people who are leading the way on a very high profile scale, but we're looking for all of those stories to put good into this ecosystem. And I'm so looking forward to developing this show with you. Before before we sign off, I'd like to just hear from you, and you, you talked a little bit about this, but what when you wake up in the morning, what is it that inspires you? Genuinely, when I, when I pray at night or in the morning, I want to be able to have the wisdom, the foresight, the knowledge, and the taps on the shoulder that cause me to go into action, right? And you never know when one of those words, positive reinforcements or small acts of kindness can literally change somebody's day, potentially life. And I look back so many times through my life at those moments. Um, and then I've circled back with those individuals and they have no clue that whatever they did for me that day literally left a lifetime impact on me for the better. Um, so that's kind of how I try to approach my day. And uh, maybe there's opportunities some days, maybe there's not on others, but in any event, uh, that's one thing I aspire to do. You set to your intention somebody. with that, yeah. 
And as a leader, I mean, now I, you you have that ability. You have 25 people working with you. And hopefully as this podcast develops, you'll you'll recruit more talent because you you are looking. But boy, that is a great opportunity to help shape lives. Absolutely. It's it's a it's a uh, big responsibility as well. Yeah, thank you so much, Brett. It was great to have you in studio, and we are excited to develop this podcast, the Elephant in the Room. We're going to tell some great inspirational stories and do some good along the way. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. I'm excited. I'm going to be interested to talk and hear from all these wonderful guests. And Brett's going to be here with us in studio. After each interview, we're going to download with him, heard with Brett, get your take. And also as the series progresses, you'll be sharing some more tips and insight for people um, that hopefully could be useful, especially for business owners, as you continue to protect yourself, your business, and plan for the days, weeks, and years ahead. Thank you everyone for listening and for watching. I'm Carrie Pena.